another minute so that all the participants could join in. Good evening to one and all present here. This is Dr. Shubhi Kulshreshta from Medical Learning Hub, welcoming you all to this live CME on diagnosis and management of DRT. It gives me immense honor and pleasure to introduce a panelist and speaker for today. We, uh, the chief guest of the CME is Dr. Vinod Gar, who is specialist, uh, principal specialist in STO of Rajasthan. The speakers are Dr. Rajveer Kuldeep and Dr. Gunjan Soli. This session would be moderated by Dr. Rama Pandekshi. Thanks to all these participants who are joined in. By the time, I request all the participants to kindly submit the poll questions. The structure of the CME are, once the welcome note is delivered, uh, we would have a chief guest inaugural by Dr. Vinod Dhar. Post that, we would have a speaker session uh, by Dr. Rajbi Kuldi on diagnostic approach in DRTV data challenges. Post that, we would have our spe a second speaker session on management of DRTV by Dr. Gunjan Zoni. The session would be moderated by Dr. Ramakan Dixit. After both these speaker sessions, we would have Q&As and post that, vote of thanks would be delivered. The general instructions of the CMER, all the participants will be muted during this live event. If you have any queries, please type in the Q&A box. If you have any comments, please type in the chat section. Queries and questions would be addressed at the end of webinar by the moderator. This session would be recorded and the recordings would be shared via email notifications to all the registered participants once the recorder is available. Polls will be raised at the start as well as at the end of the session. So I request all the participants to kindly submit your feedback by submitting the poll questions. I would like to take a moment to thank Viatris for supporting us during this session. Viatris is committed to meaningfully reducing the burden of both non-communicable and infectious diseases by leveraging our scientific medical manufacturing and commercial expertise to develop holistic integrated solutions for diagnosis, prevention, and treatment of these conditions. They are also a global leader in treatment of infectious diseases like HIV AIDS, hepatitis, and tuberculosis, and offer an extensive portfolios across these diseases state. From uh, high income countries face uh, infectious diseases challenges, and from manufacturing a pediatric penry enteroviral used to treat HIV positive infants, to providing HIV self test, uh, test kits in low and middle income countries, Beatrice is helping to innovate uh, patients. I would uh, now like to introduce our chief guest for today, Dr. Vinod, who is a principal specialist, STO Rajasthan. He has done his MBBS from SMS Medical College, Jaipur, and uh, MD, chest, uh, TB and Chest from SMS Medical College, Jaipur. Dr. Gar has over 10 uh, publications in different national as well as international journals. He's working in Rajasthan government since the, since the year 1990 and has over 32 years of experience in the field of tuberculosis program as well as respiratory diseases. Presently, he's working as an upper director and state TB officer in medical and health services, government of Rajasthan for last four years. We welcome you, sir. This session would be moderated by Dr. Ramakan Dixit, who is STF Chairperson, Senior Professor and Head of Department of Respiratory Medicine, JLM Medical College, Ajmer, Rajasthan. Uh, uh, Dr. Dixit has over 22 years of experience in clinical teaching and professional experience. Uh, he has many publications in national and international journals, more than 252, and contributors in, uh, in books and monographs. He is also on the editorial board and the member PW panel of many journals. Secretary and State Operational Research Committee of NTEP, Government of Rajasthan. Dr. Dixit has won many awards, like Doctor's Day Award toward 2017 by Rajasthan Medical Council Jaipur, Professor KJR Murthy Oration Award uh, in 2019 by Indian Chess Society, Dr. SN Gaur Oration Award in the year 2020 by NCCP Rajasthan chapter. Uh, Dr. Dixit has also won Best Oral Research Paper Award in IPF Medicon 2021 by Innovative Physicians Forum and many more. I hand over the stage to Dr. Ramakan Dixit to introduce our speakers. 
Good evening to all of you. At the very outset, I welcome all of you for joining this wonderful CME on this uh, uh, drug-resistant tuberculosis. And we have very two important eminent speakers in this CME. The, the very first is uh, Dr. Rajveer Kuldeep. He is presently Associate Professor in Department of Respiratory Medicine, JLN Medical College, Ajmer. He is also holding the post of uh, Nodal Officer National TB Elimination Program in Ajmer. He is also the Nodal Officer of Pneumoconiosis Board and member of Curriculum Committee of the JLN Medical College, Ajmer. He is having several publications and several awards in National TB Elimination Program. And he has vast experience in managing tuberculosis cases apart from occupational lung disease, COPD, asthma. And uh, he's a known person in the field of tuberculosis in Rajasthan. Our next speaker is Dr. Gunjan Soni. And uh, we don't require any introduction. I think all knows him. He's a well-known pulmonologist uh, in our country. In, uh, SP Medical College, Bikaner. He's currently holding the post of principal and controller. He's having vast teaching experience of more than 22 years uh, in the field of uh, uh, clinical research and teaching. He's uh, organizing, he was the organizing secretary of Raj Palmakon State Level Conference in 2015. He has uh, several publications in national and international journals. He was awarded certificate of merit at district level several times. And he is a recipient of letter of appreciation award at different forum as a chairperson's faculty. He's also the president of RMCTA Bikane and he's also has hold the post of chairperson STF Rajasthan. He's a well-known person. So I welcome both of you in this wonderful CME. And uh, we start with session. The, the first presentation is by Dr. Rajveer Kuldi. And over to you, Dr. Rajveer. So before that, I request Dr. Vinod for his opening words towards the CME. Mm, yes, good evening to all. We have the first speaker session with Dr. Rajvi Kuldi on diagnostic approach in DRTB uh, data challenges. So should I share the screen on your behalf? Uh, yes, ma'am. Hope the screen is visible. Mm -hmm. The slides are not visible. Just give me a moment. I think in the meantime, when the, the screen sharing is completed, I think I request our uh, STO sir. Dr. Vinod Garg, sir, for the welcome remarks before we start the session by the speakers. Thank you, Dr. Dekhi, sir. Uh, good evening and welcome 
ऑल द स्पीकर स्पेशली डॉक्टर सोनी प्रिंसिपल एंड कंट्रोलर बीकानेर डॉक्टर दीक्षित एंड डॉक्टर कुलदीप टुडे वी विल लर्न समथिंग अबाउट द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ डी आर टी बी एंड हाउ डू वी डायग्नोस एंड हाउ आर वेन वी प्रिस्क्राइब द नाथ टेस्ट वेन वी प्रिस्क्राइब द एल पी ए और कल्चर इज ऑल वी विल लर्न टूडे एंड वट इज द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ डी आर टी बी डायग्नोसिस एंड इट्स ट्रीटमेंट एज वी नो दैट थ्री टू फोर परसेंट ऑफ द पेशेंट हु हैव नेवर टेकन एंटी ट्यूबरकुलर थेरेपी इन देयर लाइफ दे आर डी आर पेशेंट एंड राउंड अबाउट थर्टीन टू फिफ्टीन परसेंट ऑफ द पेशेंट हु हैव आईदर टेकन ट्रीटमेंट इन द पास्ट और वर डिक्लेयर फेलियर दे आर नोन एज डी आर टी बी पेशेंट सो इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू गो थ्रू यू डी एस टी ऑन डे वन मेनी ऑफ अस डू नॉट अंडरस्टैंड दिस एंड वी डू नॉट प्रिस्क्राइब द नाट टेस्ट सो आई रिक्वेस्ट ऑल द फिजिशियंस एंड द ट्रीटिंग डॉक्टर्स प्लीज प्लीज एडवाइज नाट टेस्ट नॉट ओनली इन पलमोनरी केसेस इवन इन एक्स्ट्रा पलमोनरी केसेस इफ द सैम्पल इज अवेलेबल Thank you. I think now slide sharing is visible. Dr. Kuldeep, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind words. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Now the screen is visible. Yes, sir. The screen is visible. Sir. Okay. So good evening to all of you. And first of all, I would like to thank you, the Medical Learning Hub, and the associated people for a nice platform. and it is for my pleasure for to attending this cme as a speaker in the presence of my teachers dr ramakant dikshit sir and gunjan soni sir and dasty sir so the my topic is diagnostic approach in drtb so the introduction and burden of the disease the tuberculosis is a communicable disease that is a major cause of ill health and one of the leading cause of death worldwide Or the slides are not moving. Mm, Ma'am, I think uh, from my side it is moving very well. Not here, sir. Uh, sir, if you could try sharing again, or I could share on your behalf, sir. should i present so shall we share the screen on your behalf Okay. Now you have again started. Yes, we can see it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sorry for interruption. It is no a technical problem. No worries, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so um, the introduction and burden of the disease. The tuberculosis is a communicable disease that is a major cause of ill health and one of the leading cause of death worldwide. Until the COVID nineteen pandemic, the TB was the leading cause of death from a single infectious agent, ranking above the HIV AIDS. about one fourth of the world's population is estimated to be infected with the tuberculosis and about 5 to 10% of those infected develop active tuberculosis in their lifetime the major portion of the global tb burden that is 56% is represented by southeast asia and western pacific region that is very much burden to the southeast asia and among this burden india itself account for one fourth of the cases so this is a huge problem in indian setting now the tb burden in india as per the global tb report 2021 the estimated incidence of all forms of tuberculosis in india for the year 2020 was 188 per 1 lakh populations and the total number of incident tb patients 
that is new and relapse notified during 2021 was 19 <coughs> 1933 381 which was 19% had then date of 2020 so the drug resistance tuberculosis in india there are five categories of drug resistant tb used by national health program at present that that is isoniazid resistant tuberculosis rifampicin resistant tuberculosis mdr tuberculosis pre xdr and xdr tuberculosis the pre xdr tuberculosis is the tuberculosis that is resistant to rifampicin and any fluoroquinones and the xdr tuberculosis defined as that is resistant to the rifampicin plus any fluoroquinones with at least one of the drug bedaquilin and linezolid so the global and national magnitude of drug resistant tuberculosis the recent global estimate indicate that the about a million new cases of rifampicin resistant tuberculosis occurred in 2019 with 78% of them having confirmed mdr tuberculosis the estimated number of mdr tuberculosis mdr and rifampicin resistant tuberculosis cases in india is 1 lakh and 24000 in 9.1 lakh populations <clears throat> so this is the uh, according to the national drug resistance survey the 28% of the tuberculosis patient were resistant to any drugs 22% among the new and 36.82% among the previously treated patients and 6.19% had mdr tuberculosis furthermore any isoniazid resistance that is 16% in all cases with 11.6% in new and 25% in previously treated cases being drive for the rifampicin resistant tuberculosis so the mortality due to tuberculosis the estimated mortality rates among all forms of tuberculosis were 37 per 1 lakh populations in 2020 as per the global tb report 2021 there has been a slight increase in mortality rate due to all forms of tuberculosis between 2019 and 2020 by 11% in the country so now the status of drug resistant tuberculosis services in india the programmatic management of drug resistant tb is a complex and require a perfect blend of clinical and programmatic interventions india has gathered the experience of nearly two decades in planning and implementation of diagnosis and clinical management of drtb the pmdt services were rolled out in 2007 and complete geographical coverage area achieved by 2013 so this is the milestone in evaluation of pmdt in india in 2007 the initiation of drtb services Uh, were rolled was rolled out in all all over across the India. That is diagnosis by solid culture and DST in specific lab, limited testing only of the patient with unfavorable outcome, and standardized treatment started only for MDR tuberculosis. Now the expansion is going on till twenty two thousand twelve with the expansion of DR TB services in the form of establishment and expansion of LPA and liquid culture DST labs and initiation of baseline second line. Uh, dst and started the testing for all follow up positive patient for mdr tb for early detection and treatment services for mdr and xdr tb services uh, was started in uh, 2012 in 2012 and 17 the national strategic plan was built in 2012 and 17 with introduction and expansion of cbnart and universal drug susceptibility testing is, is a national policy and introduction of the newer drugs such as bedaquilin and delamanid was introduced in national strategic plan 2012 to 17 in national strategic plan 2017 to 25 for ending tb that is introduction of the trunat the nation wide coverage of udst and delamanid shorter mdr tb regime longer oral mdr tb regime was introduced in this national strategic plan the introduction of the shorter oral bedaquilin containing regimen for mdr and rifampicin resistant tuberculosis was introduced in 2021 and introduction of preventive treatment for contact of dr tb patient in 2021 in order to 
expedited the interventions for achieving the sustainable developmental goal 2025 the central tv division government of india has prepared the national strategic plan 2017 to 25 for ending tuberculosis in india through prevent detect treat and build strategies in the prevent strategies that is ensuring the airborne infection control at facility household and community level access to effective tb preventive treatment and programmatic management of tpt is a part of a strategy to prevent drug resistant tuberculosis to detect strategy the early identification of presumptive tb and diagnosis by highly sensitive diagnostic tool for tb and drtb in the treatment strategy to expand expanded the treatment and management of drtb in line with who guidelines use of ict for treatment support and strengthening the drug logistic management in building capacity ensuring the adequate funding human resources community engagement and promoting the tb research so this is the national strategic plan to ending tb in india <coughs> now the vision of drug resistant tb case finding under national tuberculosis elimination program the vision is to provide early diagnosis and pattern of resistance to all the person with any forms of drtb through universal access to drug susceptibility testing and drug resistant testing and second point is to provide the appropriate treatment through using a step wise approach in integrated diagnostic algorithm for drtb patients for detection of drug resistance and drug susceptibility there are two methods are available that is rapid molecular drug resistant testing that is genotypic method and second is growth based drug susceptibility testing that is phenotypic methods now the rapid molecular drug resistant testing it is often referred as nucleic acid amplification test that detect the specific genetic mutations that are associated with drug resistance it is a molecular test that can detect both the presence of mycobacterium tuberculosis and the resistance to the key anti tb drugs such as rifampicin isoniazid fluoroquinolones and the second line injectable drugs and it is more the results are more quickly than conventional culture and dst in genotypic methods the specimens can be respiratory specimen non respiratory specimen and culture isolates can be subjected to this nart test so there is four type of molecular methods that can be used in drug resistant testing that is uh, cbnart expert mtb xdr and trunart and line probing the molecular methods cannot be used for determining response to the treatment it is only for detection of mycobacteria and detection of resistance now the cbnart it is a cartridge based nart for simultaneous detection of tuberculosis and rifampicin resistance tuberculosis it detect dna sequence specific for mycobacterium tuberculosis complex and mutation in the rna polymerase beta genes which is associated with rifampicin resistance it is specific for mycobacterium and sensitivity is close to the liquid culture there is only one step sputum processing is required so there is uh, minimal biohazard and limited technical training is required the results are obtained within 90 minutes so now the expert mtb xdr this stage has been evaluated by who in rapid communications which is published in january 2021 when endorsed the test is suited to follow molecular test that detect mycobacterium tuberculosis and rifampicin resistance it can potentially improve the access to rapid drug susceptibility testing especially for ruling out fluoroquinolones resistance which is required before starting the shorter oral betaclean containing mdr and rrtb regimens and this detect mutation associated with resistance toward isoniazid fluoroquinolone second line injectable drugs like amikacin kanamycin capriomycin and ethionamycin ethionamide in a single test this test uses a semi quantitative nested pcr followed by high resolution melted technology the results are available only less than 90 minutes now the trunart and trunart mtb rifampicin diagnostic assay it is a chip based 
micro real time pcr based not for both detection of tb and rapamycin resistance the result is fast obtained only in 1 hours it is automated battery operated device to extract amplify and detect the specific genomic dna loci it is de designed to be operated in the peripheral laboratories with minimal infrastructure and minimally trained technicians it does not need any air conditioning or air conditioning environment and ups to operate it also requires the centrifuging of the large volume specimen like gastric lavage and aspirates now the line probe assay <coughs> it uses a pcr and reverse hybridization technique for detection of mutations associated with drug resistance the first line lpa detect mutation in the rpob gene for rapamycin resistance and in the khg genes and inh promoter regions for uh, isoniazid and ethanomide resistance the second line lpa detect mutation in the genes gair a and gair b for fluoroquinolone resistance and rrs and eis for kenamycin and second line injectable drug resistance it is very fast and results are available within 72 hours now the growth based drug susceptibility drug susceptibility testing that is phenotypic methods these phenotypic tests are used wherein bacilli are grown and subsequently tested for drug susceptibility using various drug containing and drug free medium there are two type of uh, dst methods are available dst on solid culture that is lg slop it is used earlier but nowadays discontinued due to the longer turn around time the second is dst on liquid culture that is bactec mgit 960 it is an automated liquid culture system the liquid culture enables a higher rate of mycobacterium tuberculosis isolation and requires a shorter turn around time for mycobacterial growth than solid culture now this is a short description of mgit 960 the mgit liquid culture system uses an oxygen quencher for fluorescein detection as a growth index it is the preferred method for drug susceptibility testing it can be used for testing both the pulmonary and extra pulmonary specimen for sensitivity to first as well as the second line anti tuberculosis medicines the liquid culture can also be used to monitor the response to treatment and for long term follow up of the patient on drug resistant tb treatment due to the high rate of contamination in liquid culture and lg slop is inoculated as a backup for a, every mgit culture so now we come to the integrated diagnostic algorithm for drugs resistant tuberculosis for effective management of drug resistant tuberculosis detection of the drug resistance and followed by the appropriate treatment is needed so the genotypic testing is much faster than phenotypic methods so that's why uh, these are uh, genotyping method that is not good uh, growth based test so the timely diagnosis and proper prompt treatment initiation is possible so the genotyping methods that is used in the integrated diagnostic algorithm that is not test that include the cbnat and trunat and second is line probe assay so the phenotypic dst includes performing dst using mgit system which is the preferred method for dst to many anti tuberculosis drugs the following drugs are tested group a leofloxacin moxifloxacin vedaculin and linezolid group b clofazamine and group c delamenid pyrazinamide amikacin and streptomycin so these uh, the DS, phenotypic dst are available for these medicines the integrated diagnostic algorithm begin with three group of patients that is classified as all presumptive tb or key populations all tb patients and not res not responders to treatment the all these three groups are offered a front nat for detection of tuberculosis and rapamycin resistance tb the key population include blhiv patients children extra pulmonary tuberculosis ischemia negative patients and normal chest x ray uh, uh, sputum ischemia negative but no uh, chest x ray suggestive of tuberculosis contact of drtb patient and other vulnerable groups like diabetes 
uh, and immunosuppressed patients. All the TB patients in whom an appropriate specimen can be collected are to be offered not for bacteriological confirmation of the tuberculosis and defamation resistant TB and further test for fluoroquinolones. The subsequent time point when the NAT is offered for determining additional or acquired refampicin resistance, that is bacteriologically positive during the course of DSTB or as monopoly DRTB treatment, failure to respond to treatment, and for patients who are retrieved after loss to follow up and any other reasons as per treating physician's advice. So these are the category of the patient that is offered NAT and additional refampicin resistance. The algorithm is designed to segregate the patient based on the NAT result as rifampicin resistance detected or rifampicin resistance not detected and offer DST guided treatment. As soon as NAT results are available, the report must be updated on the next day. And for the patient with NAT result as MTB detected, the second specimen will be reflexed to be transported in the cool chain from the NAT facility to the culture and DST laboratory. So this is the diagnostic algorithm for the management uh, diagnosis and management of the drug resistant tuberculosis. So there are uh, three category of the patients that to be uh, offered for the NAT. That is all presumptive TB patients or key population. Second is all TB patients and third is not responders to the treatment. So these patients are offered for NAT. If the rifampicin resistance is detected or not, then the second sample is to be subjected to the first line and second line LPA and liquid culture DST. After completing the <coughs> pre-treatment evaluation, and we have to check on the NICSA or with culture DST lab. If the results are available, then no additional resistance detected, or if uh, as resistance detected with CAT G or INH mutation, but not both. And fluoroquinolone resistance is not detected, then the patient is subjected to the shorter oral beta containing MDR RRTB regimens. If the LPA results is not available, then other exclusion criteria for the shorter regimen have to be ruled out. If there is uh, other criteria is absent, then we have to start the shorter oral beta treatment. If the other criteria is present, then we have to start the longer oral MDR or XDR TB regimens. If the culture DST results is available and additional resistance or intolerance or non availability of the any drugs in use or emergence of the exclusion criteria, then we have to use the longer oral MDR or XDR TB regimens. Modify if needed as per the replacement table. And the second, the right sided arm that is rifampicin resistance is not detected, then the sample is subjected to the first line LPA. If there is as resistance is detected, then we have to start the as monopoly DRTB regimens. If the rifampicin resistance is not detected and as resistance is not detected, then we have to start at the DSTB regimens. So this is uh, all about the diagnostic algorithm. The left arm that is rifampicin resistant detected. When the rifampicin resistance is detected, the patient is offered first line LP and second line LP. Then RR detected in a new case with no risk factor for DRTB needs to be retested if only mycobacterium tuberculosis detected was very low as that could be false positive. If there is a discordance in rifampicin resistance between NAT and LPA, then a second NAT is performed at the culture DST laboratory using the decontaminated deposit and microbiologist will provide the final decision. Direct LPA can be performed only on the smear positive specimen and culture isolates. The liquid culture DST would be set up for pyrazinamide and moxifloxacin linezolid, clofazamine, bedaculin, and delaminid whenever available. The treatment is initiated based on the result of the LPA and if the required modified based on the liquid culture DST result would be available later. If the fluoroquinolone results is not detected and H resistance is detected due to the mutation either CAT G or INHA, the patient is eligible for shorter oral bedaculin containing MDR RRTB regimens. If the fluoroquinolone results is 
resistance is detected or as resistance is due to the mutation in both cat g and inh then patient is eligible for oral longer oral mdr xdr tb regimens now the right sided arm that is rifampicin resistance is not detected in the algorithm when the rifampicin resistance is not detected the patient is offered first line lpa for detecting resistance to isoniazid if there is a discordance in rifampicin resistance between nart and lpa a second nart is performed at the culture and dst laboratory so if the as resistance is not detected then patient is continue as on dstb regimens if the as resistance is detected then patient is eligible for as monopoly drtb regimens so this is all about the diagnostic approach in drtb patients thank you so much sir for your wonderful presentations towards drtb diagnosis request of the bankunjan soni sir to kindly proceed with the uh, presentation uh, by the time i'll share the screen on the behalf on behalf of dr gunjan soni uh, good evening everybody good evening uh, dr vinod gaj sir dr rama khan dikshit dr ajmer kuldeep has done my job very well he has given a brief description about the management of drug resistant tuberculosis also so my work is easier so i'll be speaking on the management of drug resistant tuberculosis that is a very important uh, problem in india as dr vinod garg has told that uh, we should use more of a nart for the management of tuberculosis and this is this will be the lesson to all the new comers and the new doctors so next slide please so we have a standard drtb regimens are there that is first is the at mono drug resistant tuberculosis then we have a shorter mdr or rr tb regimen then we have a longer oral m or xcr tb regimen next in the at mono poly dr tb regimen at mono poly dr tb with confirmed result for rifampicin resistant not detected that is the inclusion criteria exclusion criteria is no specific exclusion is there the regimen is for 6 to 9 months we use a levofloxacin rifampicin etamotal and the pyrazinamide the duration will be 6 to 9 months 9 months in the extensive disease uncontrolled tuberculosis comorbidity except pulmonary tuberculosis near positive at the end of 4 months and the modification of the regimen so in this cases we have to extend the uh, regimen next slide first of all the pre treatment evaluation has to be done that needs a thorough clinical evaluation by a treating doctor the history and the physical examination of the patient the height and the weight the sugar levels are tested chest x ray is done HIV status is very important. Next, ma'am. So these are the doses of drugs used in the H monopoly DRTB regimen by the weight plan for the adults, and you can have it on your table. You can calculate the weight. We give the rifampicin. Ethambutol, pyrazinamide, and the levofloxacin. In the weight band, we use the drugs. Next, ma'am. Now the treatment extension. Total duration of H monopoly DRTB regimen is six months. It can be extended directly to nine months in certain conditions. In patient with extensive disease, uncontrolled comorbidity. extra pulmonary tb 
if the smear is positive at the end of four months, then the regimen is modified and the treatment may be directly extended to nine months. Treatment outcome will be declared as treatment failed in patients who remain sputum smear positive at the end of five months or later, and the patient will be re-evaluated as per the diagnostic algorithm as a non-responder. This is very important. If the patient is sus The most important, next slide. Next slide. I'm visible. And next slide, please. The replacement sequencing is very important in H monopoly regimen. If the levofloxacin cannot be used, replace the levofloxacin with the moxifloxacin high dose. If second line LK pattern suggests, then do a liquid culture DSP for the detection of this resistance to moxifloxacin and the pyrazinamide. If the moxifloxacin or pyrazinamide can't be used, replace with linozolid. If linozolid cannot be given, replace with clofazamine and the cyclosterine. On the right side, if two drugs, moxifloxacin and the pyrazinamide cannot be used, Add two drugs, linozolid, profazamine, and the cyclosin in the order of preference. If R agents shift to the appropriate shorter or longer regimen, the regimen for the H monopoly is six to nine months. Next, ma'am. If we are suspecting a rifampicin resistance, then we should go for the first line LPA. And on the first line LPA, if the INH resistance is detected, then we can go for the reflex testing for the second line LPA and the liquid culture DST for the moxifloxacin, pyrazinamide, dinozolate, and the clofazamine. If the INH resistance is there, at monopoly or DRTV is there, then we can treat on that part. Additional license or intolerance or non-availability of any drug in use or emergence of exclusion criteria or return after the long-term follow-up or failure, modify at monopoly DRTB regimen as per the replacement table. For the drug-sensitive tuberculosis, start the treatment. If he is a non-responder, do the NAT and non-responder, then you have to follow the algorithm. Next slide, ma'am. For the rifampicin resistant tuberculosis regimen, ma'am, rifampicin resistance is detected. Second assessment should be tested for the culture and DST lab. First line LPA, second line LPA, liquid culture DST for the pyrazinamide, bidacoline, clofazamine, moxifloxacin, dinozolate, and the delamonide. After completing the pre-treatment devaluation, check on NICFE with the culture DST lab. If LPA results are available, INH resistance detected with both CAT G and INH mutation or the fluorocrine resistance is there. Then this is very important on the right side. If both the CAT G and INH mutation is resistant and the fluorocrine resistance is there, then you have to put the patient on the longer oral treatment. And if the there is no additional resistance is there, INH resistance detected with CAT G or INH mutation, not both and the fluorocrine resistance is not there, then you can put the patient on the bidacoline. This is very important 
where to put the patient on the shorter regimen, where to put the patient on the longer regimen. If there is additional license or intolerance or non-availability of any drug in use or emergence of exclusion criteria or return after long-term follow-up or failure, a longer treatment should be started in those patients. Next, ma'am. So, it is a summary H monopoly. We give six to nine months of levofloxacin, rifampicin, thamotol, and pyrazinamide. Shorter MDR or RRTB regimen. We give a bidacolin orally. Injectable are no longer used after the March 22 or the longer oral M or XPR TB regimen. Next slide, ma'am. Shorter oral bidacolin containing MDR or RRTB regimen is with the guidance on current shorter injectable MDR and RRTB regimen to shorter oral bidacolin TB we can use in child more than five years of age. This is a new guideline that any child who is more than five years of age and weight more than 15 kg, we can use the oral bidacolin. The most important point is that there is a 13% higher treatment success rate among the shorter, shorter oral bidacolin contain, containing MDR or RRTB regimen. Next, ma'am. What is the eligibility criteria or the inclusion criteria? Based on the DST inclusion criteria, rifampicin resistance detected, MDR or RRTB with INH resistance detected, presence of INH or CAT G mutation only, not both. This is for the shorter. MDR or RRTB with soroquinol not detected. This is for the shorter. This is for the inclusion criteria for the shorter regimen. Children above five years of age and uh, weight more than 15 kg can be su su uh, subjected for the treatment. There should be no history or exposure to the earlier treatment for more than one month to the second line treatment. If the disease is not extensive, there is no severe extrapulmonary TB. Women who are not pregnant or lactating, they can be subjected for the shorter regimen. Next. What is the exclusion criteria? That is the opposite of inclusion criteria. Any patient with the INH resistance, with both the CAT G and INH mutation, they are not suited for the shorter regimen. Chloroquinol resistance is detected. They are not suitable for the shorter pregnancy. If the pregnancy is more than 32 weeks, it can be sub subjected. Children below five years of age, extensive teeth tuberculosis with a bilateral cavitatory disease or the parenchymal disease, Children less than 15 years or presence of cavity or the bilateral disease, severe extrapulmonary TB, where there is a presence of miliary TB or the TB meningitis or the CNS involvement, then we cannot put the patient on the shorter regimen. Intolerance to any drug or risk of toxicity from the drug in shorter oral bidacolin containing MDR, RRT. TB regimen. If there is a history of more than one month use of levofloxacin, etanamide, uh, clofazamine, if the DST to this drug is not available or is resistant. Next, ma'am. The shorter oral bidacolin containing DR regimen, the duration is 9 to 11 months. 
we give a intensive phase of four to six months in which six months of idacoline and four to six months of levofloxacin, pyrazinamide, thambutol, profazamine, and the hydrose of INH and the ethanamide. And the, in the CP phase, five months of levofloxacin, pyrazinamide, ethambutol, and the clofazamine. Shorter oral MDR TB regimen, no permanent stoppage, no replacement of any drug. Next. The pre-treatment evaluation, as I told you earlier, there is a testing of the blood sugar, HIV testing is there, height and weight is there. Since these drugs are toxic, the psychiatric evaluation is being done, the liver function is being done, including the serum proteins, the TSH level is done, urine examination is done, drugs being toxic, so electrolytes should be done, urine pregnancy in the females should be done, chest x-ray and the ECG should be done before putting the patient on the uh, shorter or the oral uh, or longer regimen. Next. These are the doses of shorter bidacolin. Most important is the bidacolin. For the first two weeks, we give 400 milligram daily. Then from third week to 24 weeks, we give a bidacolin 200 milligram thrice a week. And other drugs are given in the table. You can see, check the table and uh, apply on the patient. Next. Then to get the treatment extension, if the IP should be given for at least four months, follow up smear microscopy at the four months. If it is negative, initiate the CP with bidacoline, continue it for another two months. If it is positive, then send the sample for the first line and the second line LPA and the culture DST. Extend the IP until the sphere converts for a maximum of two months. Extend the IP to five to six months based on the smear result at the end of four to five months of the treatment. If the First line or the second line LPA shows additional resistance is detected to the pyrazinamide, clofazamine, chloroquinose, ionide. Reassess the patient at the nodal PR TB center and switch to the oral long, uh, longer regimen. And next slide, please, ma'am. Additional consideration for the use of bidacoline, the inclusion criteria. Bidacoline can be provided to adults and children above 5 years to, to 18 years, that is the pediatric group. More than 15 kg of weight and should be consulted with the pediatrician. Patient with controlled stable arrhythmia can be considered after the cardiac consultation, pregnancy, and the lactating females. Next. What are the exclusion criteria for the bidacoline? Having the long QT interval is the contraindication as these drugs are toxic, cardiac toxic. If at two times the QT interval is more than 500, then we cannot give the bidacoline. Next slide, ma'am. The key consideration for the newer drugs, if taking a light meal with bidacoline and other anti-TB drugs, patients should not consume milk containing products at the same time as the calcium in these can decrease the absorption of chloroquinol and also a large fatty meal should be avoided 
as they can impair absorption of some of the NTTB drugs such as cyclosterin and isoniazide. Next. Most important is the replacement sequencing. Need for stopping and replacing any drug in the shorter oral bidaculin containing MDR RRTB regimen warns, warrants uh, stopping the regimen and evaluating the patient to sit to all longer M or XTR regimen. Next. The standard the standard uh, DRTB regimen under the PMDT 2000-21. First, H monopoly, I've told you, shorter, I've told you, and the or longer oral M or XTRTB regimen. Next. These are the groupings of NTTB drugs for the longer MDRTB regimen. In group A, we have a levofloxacin, moxifloxacin, pedacoline, linozolate. In group B, we have a clofazamine, cyclosidine, teridol, ethambutol. Sorry, in group C is the ethambutol, delamylite, pyrazolamide, imipenem. Celestine and the mirapenem and the amikacin and the injectables. Next, in the longer oral M or XTR regimen, it is recommended for MDR or RRTB patients who are excluded from the shorter oral bidaculin containing MDR RRTB regimen, including the XTR TB. Dr. Kuldeep has nicely told about the XTR and pre-XTR TB. In case of additional license or intolerance or non-availability of any drug in use or emergence of exclusion criteria or fail to shorter oral bidaculin containing MDR or RRTB regimen or any longer regimen, the patient should be re-evaluated and initiated on longer oral MXTR regimen at the nodal TRTB center if additional license to any second-line drugs, especially the levofloxacin, moxifloxacin, or the bidacolin, linozolate, or the clofazamine, or the delamide and pyrazolamide is available. Next. The Longer oral regimen and the duration is 18 to 20 months. Vidagulin will be given for six months and extended beyond six months as an exception only. The linozolate 600 milligram for six to eight months and then reduced to 300 milligram for extra. TB patient, the duration of longer oral XTR regimen should be for 20 months. Next. Longer oral MXTR TB regimen is of 18 to 20 months with no separate IP or CP. Once a patient is placed on the longer oral MXTR TB regimen for at least four weeks, normally that patient can no longer be switched to the shorter oral bidacolin containing MDR RRTB regimen because this is four weeks treatment should represent an exposure to second line medicines. Next. I am talking about the newer drugs age criteria as per the PMDT. Bidacolin five years of uh, more than five years of age and child weighing more than 15 kg in consultation with the pediatrician. Delaminite approved in India for children about six years. Rapid communication from WHO for DRTB management 2022 both can be used in any age. WHO guidelines 
there are no additional safety concerns for concurrent use of telomerite and the beta -coulin. Consideration for the use of newer drugs. Telomerite can be provided to adults and children about six years. Telomerite will be considered only for longer oral M or XPR TB. If taking a light meal with telomerite and other TB drugs, patients should not consume milk or milk containing products at the same time as the calcium in these can decrease the absorption of the fluoroquinol. It is important that the delamnite can be taken daily, preferably after a standard meal to improve the bioavailability. Other second line drugs that are likely to be administered with the bidacolin delamnite are fluoroquinols and the clofazamine may potentially increase the risk of cardiotoxicity, so we have to keep in mind. Next. This is the table about the drugs. Elaminite can be used 50 milligram twice daily for 24 weeks in 6 to 11 years of age and 100 mg twice daily for 24 weeks for children about 12 years of age. Rest you can see from the table. Next. Yeah. Replacement drug in sequence of preference. If the levofloxin cannot be used, replace the high dose of moxifloxacin if the second line LPA pattern suggests if the moxifloxacin high dose cannot be used, replace with the delaminite. If one of betacolin, dinosaurite, or the tropozamine, or the cyclosterine cannot be used, replace with the delaminite. So delaminite is a very important drug nowadays. Next slide. This is the replacement sequencing. In 2020 and in the PMDT 2021, there are changes. We can use the delaminite, amikacin, pyrazinamide, ethanamide, PAS, ethambutal, and imipenem, and the celastin. In 2020, WHO, ethambutal, delaminide, pyrazinamide, imipenem, celastin, amikacin, ethanamide, and the PAS. Next. The basic principle for managing the DRTB prevention is must prevent development of DRTB by appropriate management of drug-sensitive tuberculosis. We should use the appropriate regimen, correct doses, regular intake, and full duration should be given. Next. So these are the newer drugs. Pitonamide, that is also called as PAA24. It acts by inhibiting the mycolic acid and the protein synthesis. It is a bactericidal and the sterilizing agent. Now included in the WHO and the PMDT due to its performance in the NIX TB trial. Next. EPAL regimen, bidacolin, pitomonide, and the linozolid. According to the PMBT 2021, EPAL can be considered as the last resort by the NTEP under the prevailing ethical standard in the individual patient from whom the design for an effective regimen is not possible. There is an effective longer oral MXPRTB regimen can not be designed with the available drugs. MDR, nodal uh, drug center, TB centers, 
or uh, may send their care to the national uh, center for the clinical discussion and decision for the bpal regimen a treatment regimen lasting for the 6 to 9 months composed of bidacolin pitonamide and lanazolid may, may be used under operational research condition in mdr tb patient with tb that is resistance to the fluoroquinones who have either or no previous exposure to the bidacolin and the lanazolid or have been exposed for no long, no more than 2 weeks thus does not apply to routine programmatic use of this bpal regimen in the next tb trial it showed that the bpal showed 90% favorable outcome among xcr and mdr with fluoroquinol resistant treatment intolerant non responder it was 92 doses of pitonamide is 200 mg once daily for 26 weeks and the bidacolin 400 mg daily for first two weeks of treatment for the first to 14 days then 200 mg thrice a week for 24 weeks and the lanazolid 1200 mg once daily for 24 weeks next recommendation in the who 2022 update based on the genics and the tb tetel trial result any child more than 14 years no severe ptb meningitis bpal can be used in pre xpr bpal plus moxifloxacin can be used in the mdr tb trial support new recommendation for the use of these regimen under the program programmatic conditions next this is the summary about the drugs where we can use the various drugs next so the summary is that in the at monopoly 6 to 9 months of rifampicin thambotol pyrazinamide and the levofloxacin shorter oral bidacolin containing mdr or rrtb regimen 4 to 6 months of bidacolin with levofloxacin clofazamine and the pyrazinamide thambotol high dose of ionet ethanamide and followed by the levofloxacin clofazamine pyrazinamide thambotol in the longer oral mxcr tb regimen 18 to 20 months of levofloxacin bidacolin for 6 months or longer nanozolid clofazamine cyclosporine doses of nanozolid will be tapered to 300 mg after the initial 6 to 8 months of the treatment thank you very much for the patient hearing thank you Thank you so much, sir, for a wonderful presentation. We have some Q and A's in our Q and A box. I request Dr. Rajvi also to join us for the Q and A, uh, and I request Dr. Ramakant Dixit also, sir, also to kindly uh, if you could check out with the Q and A's with us. Thank you, Dr. Rajvi and Dr. Gunjan Soni for an excellent presentation. you have nicely described the the various uh, diagnostic algorithm to diagnose malic this uh, multi drug resistant or drug resistant tb and dr soni you have uh, very clearly and uh, very simplified the the various treatment regimen uh, what are the different regimens for the the drug resistant tb and the replacement sequence including the pre treatment evaluations so wonderful uh, presentation by both the speakers we have few questions from the uh, uh, participants in this event 
And the very first question is, sir, can we eradicate TB completely from India, including drug resistant TB by the year 2025? It's a question, can we eradicate drug resistant TB by 2025? Mm, yes, sir. Mm. <clears throat> Sorry to interrupt, but uh, I think uh, this can be possible by active participation, all the doctors, medical staff, and also active participation of community engagement. And so this can be possible if the all together work are done by the uh, healthcare, healthcare workers and the communities. So, yes, rightly said, we all need a dedicated effort, actually, for this disease. Now we have best of tests available to diagnose these, uh, this disease. We have best possible medicine available to treat this disease than we ever had earlier in past. So I think it is a, a collective effort from uh, all of us that we can actually um, if not eliminate, uh, eradicate, at least we can eliminate, at least we can make it, make it a, a public, uh, no more a great public health issue. So we can do our best from our side as far as, because this is a disease uh, that uh, is really a challenging one. It's difficult to treat definitely, but, one, but, but with the best possible treatment we have from, with us, I think, and the cure rate have improved much. We have newer drugs like Bidaclin, Lenizolid, best possible drug. We have the WHO class medicine available. Yes, we can um, at least try from our side. We can give our efforts to uh, eliminate this disease as far as possible from our side. Thank you, Dr. Raj. Thank you, sir. So the next question is, uh, any survey going on by the health fraternity to detect drug resistant TB throughout India to achieve our targets in 2025 TB for India? Any survey going on the health fraternity to detect drug resistant TB? Now, I think at the very first beginning of uh, this uh, CME in the welcome address, the STOs are included that we have data with us that at least three to four percent of persons having no history of tuberculosis are detected to have the drug resistant TB. And about 13 to 15 percent of persons who had past history of uh, any drug treatment for tuberculosis are found to have a drug resistant tuberculosis. So we have some data right now. And the, the, the data are, uh, I think, the regular updated at national level from different uh, parts in, uh, in different centers, the studies are going on and they are published by the central TB divisions uh, time to time. Now we have another question. Is there any vaccine available for the treatment of drug resistant TB? Uh, Dr. Sony, would you like to answer this question? Is there any vaccine available for treatment of drug resistant TB? Sir, hope God will listen to you and uh, he will create a vaccine for us. Research is going on. And yes. Definitely there are certain vaccines in pipeline and they are uh, under trial stage and all over the world. And I think in future we may have. Another question is, uh, uh, if a mother is suffering from drug resistant TB, is there any chances for her baby to suffer from TB? If the mother is suffering from DRTB, is there chances for her baby to suffer from TB? Dr. Ramakant, if the uh, mother is suffering from the pulmonary tuberculosis, 
then uh, there are high chances that the children or the child will can suffer so in that cases we should give our ppt to to those children to protect these children and if they are diseased then we should give the treatment definitely and the early treatment uh, will make the mother non infectious it's also very important thank you dr soni for the nice answer now there is another questions uh, there are many viruses in the environment is there is chance of eruption of new disease due to their mutations no before that there is one more question covid 19 and tb pulmonary tb both affects the lung then why covid 19 causes early death as compared to tb please explain i think the, the covid 19 causes a fulminant disease an acute uh, pulmonary infective disease as compared to the tb this is the basic uh, difference in the if we see the epidemiology of the both the disease mycobacterium tuberculosis is a chronic disease and whereas the covid 19 causes uh, a rapid progression of disease because of the the cytokine storm and the higher chances of mortality i think there is a basic difference in the epidemiology of the both the disease one is viral one and the other is bacterial one and because of the virulence and other factors the covid 19 has got a, a very uh, rapid mortality trend as compared to the tb i think that is why this causes uh, that is a more important cause if a person get covid 19 These are in already tuberculosis. So if there are many viruses in the environment. Is there is a chance of eruption? Uh, there are many viruses in the environment. Is there is chance of eruption of new disease due to their mutation? Yes, we do not know. There are so many viruses in the environment. We are not aware of COVID. how it came still and uh, the lot of mutation we saw in the covid pandemic also the omicron and then so many later on so we don't know actually we don't have any answer for this question there is another question which disease are more dangerous which disease are more dangerous caused by viruses or the bacteria please explain in detail Dr. Sony, would you like to answer? This disease is more dangerous, viral or bacterial? So it depends on the virulence of the virus. Basically, yes, we we are more concerned about the virulence of the virus. I think in our present era, I would think that the drug resistance tuberculosis or the XCR. tuberculosis is more difficult to treat and it is more dangerous definitely definitely and there are so many factors like the host factors the comorbid illnesses and the the those so many things that affect the immune system of our body so that also determines uh, which is going to be more dangerous the another question is uh, what supplement one has to give to tb patient what supplements should be given to tb patient dr soni the high protein diet is recommended for the any patient who is suffering from the chronic illnesses so a high protein and a moderate amount of carbohydrate diet should be given and the fresh vegetables and the fruits to be given and i prefer that uh, use of tulsi on a regular basis can be very helpful in those patient who are suffering from tuberculosis yes nutrition has to play an important role as far as the management of uh, uh, drug resistant tb not only the drugs we have to look at the nutrition aspect also so it is an important part in tb management another question is uh, the is lung transplantation possible for late stage of tb patient
Dr. Sony, would you like to answer? Is lung transplantation possible for later stage of TB patient? When the tuberculosis is being healed or it is uh, affecting the health of the patient, then we can think of the lung transplantation. I have a very uh, poor study about the lung transplantation. So I am not a good uh, researcher in this field because I have got a limited knowledge about the lung transplantation. Yes, uh, the surgery do have some role in uh, drug resistant TB if it is limited. And some centers are doing surgical treatment for drug resistant tuberculosis. But as far as the lung transplantation is concerned, I think there are so many factors also, like the, the suitability of the preparedness of the candidate because the extensive disease patients are so cachectic. They have the poor pulmonale also. Once they get into that stage of lung transplantation, they already have so many complications. So their surgical candidature is also an issue. So I think the... Uh, this is there are so many gray areas as far as the lung transplantation is concerned and still there are no such i think data available as far as the lung transplantation in tb patients are available with us right now in the literature now there's a last question what to increase appetite of severely cachectic patient of tb what to increase uh, Appetite, how we can uh, in intervention to do increase in appetite for TB patients who are severely affected. Now see the appetite in TB patient is because of the disease per se. And once we start treating tuberculosis, the appetite improves at its own. And equally important is the role of nutrition, the good diet, as Dr. Sony earlier said, the high protein, moderate carbohydrate, and the vitamin-rich food diet, I think they all works for uh, increasing the appetite of the patient. Eating the disease in itself improves the appetite of the patient. Dr. Ramakan, I would like to add one more thing that if we give the doses in the divided doses, that okay. will also help in uh, uh, improving the appetite instead of giving a Full drug that a single time that will decrease the appetite. So, a divided doses should be preferred in patient of uh, MDR or XDR tuberculosis. So, this can be tried. Uh, rightly said, uh, because there are so many medicines as far as uh, the patient of uh, drug resistant TB takes. So, we can do some uh, separating the dose at a frequent time interval rather than giving all together will also work for such patients. And that will also help to at least uh, uh, make their appetite better. Now, do cavitation of a pulmonary TB patient heal after successful ATT treatment? Do cavity heal? Dr. Rajveer, would you like to answer? Yes, sir. Does cavity heal after successful treatment? Uh, yes, sir. The cavity of the pulmonary tuberculosis can be healed with the, uh, taking the proper and adequate treatment of the uh, corresponding regimens. So it can be healed, but the adequate and complete treatment should be provided at that time. Yeah, rightly said, uh, Dr. Rajveer. As far as the early tuberculosis or the early cavity is concerned, we have seen the cavity collapse and sometimes also disappear with the starting treatment and at the end of treatment, the cavity sometimes disappear. But as far as the chronic cavities are concerned, if the patient comes at the later stage, if the diagnosis is delayed, patient comes late. And once the cavity is formed and is chronically thick-walled, I think such cavities sometimes persist and rather most time persist chronic cavity, which are already thick walled. They often persist and they remain as open negative syndrome, you know, very well once the patient get cured with effective treatment. So yes, in the early stage, if the cavity is early, they disappear, they heal completely. But if they are chronic cavity, yes, they persist and may have some complications with their own like fungal colonization, fungal aspergilloma, 
and other complications, recurrent infections sometimes. So it depends upon the at what stage patient come to us for treatment with cavity. Uh, another question, giving short course of steroid for breathlessness and hypoxic patient in pulmonary TB will worsen TB? It's a very practical question because sometimes pulmonary TB patient comes with the breathlessness and in hypoxic stage, will it worsen TB? I think the answer is no. If we are giving the adequate treatment for pulmonary TB for a shorter duration, we can give corticosteroid. If the patient comes, uh, suppose if he having associated acute exacerbation of COPD, or even if there is an acute uh, fulminant tuberculosis, sometimes very toxic patient come, we have to give uh, the steroids for a shorter period of time, but provided the patient should have a complete umbrella of anti-tuberculosis drug with him. So they can be used safely, provided patient is taking anti-tuberculosis drug according to the sensitivity, according to the diagnosis. Another question is, uh, will a scar remain visible even the patient is healed already? Will a scar remain visible? The question is not clear to me. Why is scar remain visible even the patient is healed already? I think the, the question is related to the radiological lesions that sometimes uh, the fibrotic lesions, they persist even, answer, even if the treatment is completed because fibrosis and calcification uh, remains there. It's not reversible. I think Dr. Surbhi want to answer this question live. Dr. Surbhi? Uh, sir, uh, we have received the comment regarding the question, sir. Uh, so this is scar in the lens and the fibrotic lesions that are, that is being talked about. Okay, fibrotic lesions. Yes, the fibrosis, you know, is a reversible process and we cannot revert it. And sometime, and as I said earlier also, if the patient comes late, already there's so much extension of disease, some amount of fibrosis, because disease itself healed by the fibrosis. So fibrosis is an inevitable consequence of the natural healing, whether you treat or not treat. Sometimes even with treatment, the fibrosis persists, because whatever already damage has been done by the disease is there. The treatment is just to prevent the further progression and to reduce the, the necrosis part. But fibrosis itself is a part of healing. So some fibrotic lesion, especially if the patient come late, is uh, not unexpected. Any more questions? So with this, we have completed the QA. So um, I have one question to and Dr. Sony. Uh, you have an experience of using drug-resistant uh, drug TB managing for last few years. And have you seen any severe uh, adverse drug reactions with newer drugs like bidiculine or lanizolate? Because they are the new drugs added in the management. Do you have any severe or uh, adverse drug reaction with these drugs, bidiculine and linezolate? Dr. Sony. Sir, uh... With the bidaculine and delaminate, we have not faced uh, any uh, severe drug reaction. Uh, we are monitoring the patient uh, as per the guidelines. So we stop the drug uh, as soon as the acuity interval increases. With the linozolate, we have seen certain uh, Hemolytic anemia, we have seen, we have seen the various uh, blood disorders, the drop in hemoglobin, that we stop the drug. So, not so severe, but these are part of the drug uh, toxicity. So, we have not seen that any patient dying of telomerite or the bidaculin. Yeah, so the message from your side is that these drugs are quite safe uh, as far as our own experience is concerned. However, the close monitoring is required in such cases to prevent complications. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir.
for your wonderful moderation towards this Q and A session. With this, we'll proceed towards uh, the vote of thanks. So before that, I'll request the audience who are there with us. We have uh, may, raised may the I may, may I speak now? You are sure, sir. Sure, sure sir. sir. Uh, once again, thank you very much to all the speakers. And only one or two points I would like to raise as a carry home message. Whether this is DSTB or DRTB, early diagnosis and prompt treatment is the key point. If we are able to diagnose the TB at early point, and if we can start the treatment, proper treatment, then I think we can eliminate the TB. Elimination and eradication, there are two different things. As Dr. Dixit said that if TB will no more be a public health problem, then it will be called as a elimination of TB. Elimination by 2025 does not mean that there will be no TB after 25. It will be there, but it will no more be a public health problem. This is what we are trying. Second thing is the good nutrition. As Dr. Sony said, high protein diet is mandatory. Then UDST. I request each and every doctor just after diagnosis of TB, please send a sample, whether it is pulmonary TB or extra pulmonary TB, please send a sample to the nearest NAT lab so that UDST can be performed. Hmm. At many centers, we have started the upfront NAT, where diagnosis is being made with the help of NAT machines. Then comorbidity. Please see whether patient is HIV positive or not. Please see whether diabetes is there or not. If patient is HIV positive, patient will never be treated with only antitubercular treatment. If patient is diabetic and uncontrolled blood sugar, first and foremost will be to treat the diabetes and keep the blood sugar levels normal. Then one of the question was about back vaccination. Now we are going to start a trial for adult BCG vaccination. Adult BCG vaccination for more than 18 years of the age, those who had TB in the past or those who are diabetic or those who are HIV positive, we will select the patient and we will give the, the BCG vaccination same dose as it is for the pediatric patient. Dr. Sony said that we can divide the drug. I think only few drugs as ethylamide can be given in divided doses. Please do not divide each and every antitubercular treatment, antitubercular drug. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. So with my, I express my sincere gratitude towards our eminent speakers and panelists for today, especially Dr. Vinod Agar for uh, his extreme and uh, you know, important present towards uh, the CME as a chief guest. I also express my gratitude towards Dr. Ramakan Dekshit for moderating this session. Uh, my sincere gratitude towards Dr. Gunjan Soni and Dr. Rajveer Kuldeep for sharing their expert views towards this topic of TRTB. I thank all the participants for their presence towards the CME. And I also want to thank Viatris for supporting us throughout the CME. The recording of the session would be available on our platform, medicallearninghub.com. And the certificates would be presented to all the live audience uh, who are there with us on their registered email address within seven to 10 working days. Also, for me, uh, more interesting updates on tuberculosis, kindly subscribe to our newsletters and log on to medicallearninghub.com for many upcoming CMEs. Thank you all for your wonderful presence. Thank you, Dr. Gar. Thank you, uh, Dikshit, sir. And thank you, Dr. Rajvi and Dr. Gunjan Soni for being with us here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Bolo. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'll request the audience to finally submit the poll questions. Thank you for.